Hi guys, Robby46 here. Now today we are celebrating the fact that the channel has hit over 5,000 subscribers. But not only that, it has gained over 2 million views as well. So first of all, a huge, huge thank you to all of you for all your support, for everyone who's subscribed, commented, liked videos and all that stuff. So it really helps. Um, and really means a lot. So uh, today we're going to be doing a Q&A. Last week I asked you guys to uh, to send some questions on some videos that I've done in the comments section. So now we're going to run through them and uh, answer your guys' questions. First of all, ap apologies if I pronounce any of your names wrong. Hopefully I won't, but I do apologise if I do. We'll actually have to do this in two parts just because there's so many questions to answer. But uh, we'll get on with it. First question is from Jack Stewart. And uh, he's actually got multiple questions here. So, first question, do you think Hachi will do all five again at the TT this year? Um, well, I know that he's already won the Superbike race now, but um, I, I don't think he will do all five. Uh, I think, as at Michael Dunlop, he's won Super Sport, and he's so... No, I don't think he will do all five. It would be nice if he did, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, will I be getting... The Arleman TT Ride on the Edge game, and if so, will I be covering? Yes, of course I will. Um, I'm looking to see what the the gameplay is going to be like. Obviously, the, they're going to be releasing some gameplay footage of it very, very, very soon. And hopefully, if it's any good, then yes, I will be getting it and covering it as well. What platform do I play on? Uh, Xbox One is what I usually play on. Is what I pretty much always play on, actually. So thank you for those questions. Um, Spence Smithback asks, what tracks do you hope to see added to the MotoGP calendar in the coming years? I would actually like to see some older tracks come back into it. Uh, places like Suzuka, um, just because that's a really nice track. I know that the reason they didn't go there anymore is because of safety reasons and obviously uh, when we tragically lost uh, Jiro Kate. So um, if they got the, the safety up together, then it would be really nice to go back there. Um, also, Paul Ricard is a really, really nice track. Um, it is a shame that they don't go there anymore, but again, with the whole safety thing, uh, it would be really nice to uh, to go back there. And also, like places like Monza, I would love to see a MotoGP bike at Monza. Uh, that'd be really awesome to watch a, a MotoGP race at Monza. But again, with safety and everything, um, it probably won't happen. But yeah, so that's uh, that's that. Next one is from the Epic 46. You know you do tons of moto vids, by the way, they're great, thank you. Um, but I just want to know if you ride an MX bike, being a rider myself, keep up the great work. I don't ride a MX bike. The bike I currently have, uh, it isn't actually rideable at the moment. It's a uh, Yamaha RD400, uh, which I'm currently doing up and restoring. So um, yeah, that's... Uh, on the back burner at the moment, it's just a little project I've got going with my dad. Mark asks, you've played quite a few MotoGP games now, but who is the best person you have ever raced against online? Could be the fastest person or the person you enjoyed racing the most or both. Keep up the great vids, dude. Thank you. Um, that That's a really, really tough question. But I think the person that I've probably enjoyed playing the most, even though he is like stupidly fast, but just because he's like he's a really nice guy, he's a proper gent, and um, he will always try and help you out like with setups and that. Um, for me, it's got to be one racer. Uh, I know that he mainly plays on PS4 now, but um, the the time that I've spent racing against him in the leagues and other things, it's uh, it's always a pleasure racing against him. Usually, when he used to race in my leagues, he used to send me a message after every race saying like "good job" and uh, "thanks for." organizing and stuff so real nice guy really really fast and um yeah i hope i get to race against him soon because it's it's always fun racing against him mace dirt asks do you drive a car or bike if you do what type well the bike i've already mentioned rd400 but obviously not riding that because it's uh, still in the process of being restored car i have a suzuki swift sport um i did have a subaru impreza a few years ago but um kept having quite a lot of problems with that and um, the central diff was going the uh, central diff bearing was wearing really really badly uh, and it was going to cost like 1500 quid to get it replaced so um, I decided to get rid of that and just went for, for a brand new car 
And yeah, the, the Swift's a nice car. It drives nice. It uh, it can go if you get in the top top end of the the range of the revs. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's nice and practical. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be anything like a Ferrari, anything glamorous like that. But it is what it is. Okay, now this one I'm going to have a problem pronouncing. It's actually two questions from this guy, Shayan Hassan Biggie. I apologise if I have pronounced that completely wrong. But um, here's put, will you start to ignore people in the comments section when you get more popular? How would you aim to keep us in contact with you? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I do try my best to keep, keep on top of comments. I mean, sometimes I may not reply to comments straight away. Sometimes I will. Um, but sometimes I will like take take a day where I'll just like run through the comments and uh, try and reply to as many as I can. It's just one of these things that obviously the more popular the get you get, the um, the more comments you're gonna get, and it will probably get to a point where I won't be able to answer them all. But what I think I will do is if that gets to a point where I can't physically like go into a comment section and reply to all your comments because there's so many of them and I don't have enough time. I will um, do Q&A videos or read in your comments videos in the future where I'll just spend a whole video just uh, like reading your comments and answering them or questions or whatever. A bit like we're doing today, obviously this is just a Q&A, but like if that does happen then I will do like a video just reading comments and stuff like that. Obviously with gameplay in the background. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what my aim is. Uh, I, I'm not entirely convinced that that's ever going to happen because I don't think we're going to get big enough where that's going to become a problem. But if it did, that's what I would aim to do to uh, obviously keep in contact with you all and uh, stuff like that. Short answer though is no, I will not ignore the comment section if I get any bigger. So don't worry about that. And uh, his second question was, what is your dream bike and would you want to race in real life? I would love to race in real life. It, uh, it's kind of like what my dream job would be. But um, obviously the whole money situation, it's uh, just not actually possible just because to get into racing is very expensive. Um, I know that club racing is a lot cheaper, but you still need to get... Um, a good amount of money behind you to be successful. Uh, dream bike though, it's a pretty simple one. Uh, not everyone's taste, but I just love it. It's a uh, Suzuki GSXL 1000, just because I love Suzuki's. I've always loved the Jixa, and uh, yeah, that would be my dream bike, which is why I'm jealous of my dad because he's got one. Okay, so next one is from Mark Ten Brink, and he asks, "What do you think of Zarco's start of this MotoGP season?" Fantastic start. Um, I'm probably more impressed with him than what I was with Marquez when Marquez moved up to MotoGP. I know that I'll probably get shot in the foot for saying this, but um, I just think that obviously Marquez kind of had it a little bit easier because he had a full-blown factory bike from the get-go, whereas uh, Zarco obviously on a, a satellite Yamaha. I just think that he's doing a fantastic job, uh, and I do believe that before the end of the season he will win his first race. Um, because he's got tremendous pace. We saw him get second in Le Mans, which was awesome to see. And um, yeah, it's, uh, he, he's doing a really good job. I think he will probably end up replacing Rossi when Rossi does eventually retire. But um, I think Yamaha definitely need to keep hold of Zarco because he is going to be their future. Uh, this next one, I apologise, I cannot pronounce, but I think it's Iasi... I yeah, I can't pronounce that. I apologise. Um, what is your favourite video game of all time? Favourite video game of all time? Oh my god. Um, that's that's really tough. Probably... Oh god. That's, that's got me thinking. Okay, so my favourite video game of all time is... I, I kind of have to narrow it down to two. Uh, one being the original Doom. Because that is the first ever game that I ever finished when I was younger, a lot younger. Um, I just love playing that game. And the second one, again, is from remembering when I was younger. Um, and that is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on the N64. Um, that is, that. well, back in the day, I loved playing that game. And 
Um, played it for hours, finish it, and then just keep replaying it. And um, yeah, I don't know. My mind was just blown back in the day by like how advanced things were getting. Things like GoldenEye as well. That was also one of my favourite games back in the day as well. Uh, I remember going around my cousin's house and I was just playing the hell out of multiplayer on that game. Um, so yeah, I kind of haven't really answered your question. But yeah, one of those three. <laughs> Oscar Tipton asks, what is your favourite team in BSB? Favourite team? I don't know. Uh, I'd probably go with the McCams Yamaha, just because I like like the colour scheme of it. Um, I think James Ellison is a fantastic rider, doesn't always have the best of luck. Yeah, I, I, I like the bike, I, I like the colour of it, and uh, yeah, it's probably the one of the best looking teams there. Ad hit Tia Num. Again, apologies if I've uh, pronounced that right, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. As do you ride a motorcycle in real life? Um, kind of answered that already in a previous question. Um, my bike at the moment is not rideable. Uh, my Yamaha RD400. But um, hopefully when it, it is rideable, I'll get out riding again. Riv11 asks, who is your favourite British MotoGP Moto2 rider? Wow. Moto2 rider, we haven't really got one. I know we've got Danny Kent in there. but um, And obviously Taron McKenzie. But... Uh, I don't know. I guess my favourite British MotoGP rider. Is that current or of all time? Should we do current? We'll do current. Uh, current MotoGP rider. I'm going to have to say Cal Crutchlow. I know that a lot of people don't like him because he, he crashes a lot. but And people think he's arrogant. But I like the fact that he does speak his mind and he, he doesn't really sugarcoat anything. Um... And obviously, he, he is quick as hell on his day as well. Um, so yeah, that he's probably my favourite British MotoGP rider. Moto2, if we went back to last year, I would say Sam Lowe's. Just because I love the way that he used to back the bike in. And obviously, he was really, really quick in, in Moto2 as well. So, I'm going to go with those two. I know Sam Lowe's isn't current, and Crutchlow is, but yeah, that... That's what I have to say. If I went with current Moto 2, I'd have to say Taron McKenzie, just because he's the only full-time Brit in it. So, um, yeah, that's that's the answers to that. Jack GPR asks, who's your favourite rider in World Superbikes and British Superbikes? World Superbikes is Jonathan Ray, just because of how far he's come. Uh, he went for so many years struggling on the Honda Fireblade. Uh, yeah, he won quite a few races on it, but that bike was not competitive and shouldn't have been winning races when he was. Um, so he did have to override the bike, which did lead to quite a few crashes. But um, now that he's on the factory Kawasaki, he's just pretty much dominating. I know he's uh, he's fighting with Chaz Davis at the moment, but um, he has got a pretty decent lead in the championship. And uh, I just think he's, he's such a talented rider. It would be great to see him in MotoGP, um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. And British Superbikes, I would have to go with... I'm going to go with Haslam, just because he's quite a, a ragged rider, um, and he, he is quick as hell, and his wild card at Donington in World Superbikes when he got second place uh, was fantastic to see. But he, he's a very busy rider to watch, like flapping his knees when he's going down the gears and stuff. Um, and he's just quite an exciting rider to watch. So I would go with him for my uh, for my favourite uh, British Superbike rider. He's also asked a couple of other questions. When did you get into MotoGP and racing? MotoGP I got into, I think it was about the year 2000, I think. It may have been a bit before that. Um, just because I, I remember playing MotoGP2 on the PST and um, enjoying it and playing it with my dad and he used to thrash me because I was terrible at the game. Um, so I was quite young, so it was probably maybe a bit before. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't, I don't know if the, those dates even add up. I don't even know when MotoGP2 came out. But that's probably when I, I first got into MotoGP was uh, when that game came out and then like, I think we played it on a Saturday, and then on the Sunday, I just happened to go into the sitting room, and like, it was on. I was like, what, what are you watching? And my dad was like, oh, it's, uh, it's 
my GP. So I was like, oh, okay. So I watched it, and ever since then, I was hooked. Um, I I did like see my dad watching them when I was of a younger age, but I didn't really take m much notice. So I've always kind of been around um, motorbike racing in general. But I think it wasn't until I got a bit older that I started like getting really into it and getting really passionate about it. And then his third question is, do you think Rossi can win the title again? And why do you support Valentino Rossi? Do I think R Rossi can realistically win a title again? It's, I hate to say it, but it's looking very, very doubtful. I mean, I would love him to, to win his 10th title, but as it stands at the moment, it's not quite there. Um, obviously, he's been struggling a bit on this year's Yamaha, but maybe if he gets his head around, he can. But I think with the the older he gets, he is going to start getting a bit more, uh, a bit slower. So um, I don't know. It, time will tell, but I I'm not holding my breath that he will. And why do you support Valentino Rossi? I've, I've pretty much always supported Rossi um, from the time that I started watching MotoGP. Um, even back in the day when he was on the Honda. I've just like always enjoyed watching him race and uh, his celebrations and that and I just think he's all around like the most entertaining rider out there and he has done a lot for the sport and made it what it is today. Okay so Battlenet has asked would you just say my real name in a video? Alvin Glavisev? Probably not so <laughs> I probably haven't said it in the video but um yeah, apologies if I said it wrong. Uh, he's also asked, where do you live? In a house. And how old are you? I am 26. Well, that's where I'm going to end the first part of the Q&A video, guys. Uh, like I said, it will be a two-parter, so uh, be sure to check out the second part when it comes out. Uh, thank you to everyone who has sent in their questions. Um, if you haven't seen your question in this video, like I said, there will be another one following this at some point. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and again, thank you so much for everyone who subscribed, everyone who watches my videos, everyone who gives them a thumbs up and uh, comments and everything like that. I really, really appreciate it. I couldn't do this without you guys and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the future brings. So like I said, look out for part two of the Q&A session. And uh, in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. We'll see you guys in the next video. See you.